Um, hi, everyone. So my name is John Ghost here. I'm the CEO of a company called uh, Data Group, or D8A. Uh, and we specialize in building solutions for uh, finding the correlations between people's online behavior uh, and their offline behavior, specifically for public safety agencies. So they can, we can help them respond faster using these uh, kind of uh, leading patterns that uh, we're able to surface online. Um, what's interesting about that is even though it's the area of public safety, the same tools, technology, strategies that we use are, are very similar to the same tools, technologies, and strategies that online marketing agencies use to uh, reach uh, customers online. Um, we've essentially repurposed those technologies for different uh, means. Um, so when you talk about the, the future of, of this space, um, uh, digital marketing, uh, I, I like to think that real-time intelligence is actually now. We can all essentially fire up Google Analytics, we can fire up um, Hootsuite, and we can find out what's going on around us, we can find out what's going on with our brands. The future is, is starting to get into areas of uh, anticipating behavior before it happens, so predictive intelligence, um, and that's the area that we work in. Um, so again, we uh, work uh, mostly in areas in public safety, building smarter, safer, safer uh, faster cities um, by using data-backed uh, decision making. Um, but th the types of strategies that they use can be applied to you and your brands in many ways. Um, essentially, there's uh, three uh, things that people look at when they look at these types of technologies. So uh, monitoring, um, which is, uh, I would say, where we are now, and measuring, which is kind of analytics, um, turning those, what you've monitored into some sort of insight so you can uh, intervene or form some sort of strategy. Uh, and then you have the mitigations themselves, and that's where the predictive part lies, uh, where you're trying to anticipate what's going to happen so you can make smarter decisions or become better prepared. Um, so although we don't work in the area of marketing, uh, some of our users do. And so uh, it, when uh, this talk came up a few months ago, I thought back to a project that we worked on with um, an author, a writer uh, named Rick Smolin, who published a book named The Human Face of Big Data in 2012. Um, the human face of big data uh, attempted to try to relate uh, uh, these very abstract concepts of big data and analytics to just everyday people uh, using pictures. He's actually a photographer for National Geographic. Uh, and we happened to work on the marketing campaign for that book. So I thought it would be a good case study to share with you. Um, so this is the book. This is the cover. Um, I highly encourage you to check it out. Uh, we only worked on the marketing. We don't get residuals. I can genuinely tell you it's a good book. Um, uh, and this is one of the pictures from that book. I, I use this to, to, to relate the idea of monitoring um, and using lots of different tools and technologies. Um, so this, this monitoring space uh, there's, is very crowded. There's lots of technologies that, that we use to do these types of things. Google Analytics is one form of technology that you can use to monitor online audiences. Um, TweetDeck, Hootsuite. Um, uh, I saw someone from Social Radar around. Um, these are all technologies you can use to kind of see what's going on that's, that relates to your brand. Um, one of the ways that we apply that to, to um, uh, not Rick's project, but a, a, a similar brand, uh, which was that of uh, TED, TED.com, uh, we used um, uh, what's an uh, open source tool called WebGL to help them capture and monitor the reaction, the global reaction to their conference as it was going on uh, a few uh, months ago, uh, actually a few years ago. Uh, this was the 2013-12 uh, TED conference. Uh, and essentially, these spikes that you see are people's interest in the TED brand as expressed online through tweets, through social media activity, through uh, online conversations that we're able to collect and turn into these um, uh, spikes, which just represent frequency, so the number of people watching in a certain part of the world. Um, as you can imagine, the west coast of California was very popular, but there's some areas that, that were really interesting because it's not exactly obvious that there was a lot of people um, aware of the TED brand there. Um, 
if you're a brand or if you're someone who's giving a talk, you might be really interested in a tool like this because you can start to segment uh, the difference between the overall conference and when you're delivering your performance, um, something that many of the people who have spoken today might be interested in, uh, in in terms of their public speaking. Um, but these types of technologies just represent that ability to quantify who's watching and essentially um, watching who's watching you. Um, this is another screenshot. It shows the kind of spread, uh, the change over time as people became more, um, starts, uh, the, the one on the left was a bit earlier than the one on the right. Um, and this was an interactive globe, so it spins and you can move around, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Um, so what's interesting to us is that uh, the same technologies that are being used to do this type of brand analysis and brand um, mitigation is the same type of uh, uh, tools and technologies that are being used in, in, let's say, the Red Cross Digital Operations Center, which uh, this is a screenshot of. Uh, where they're using, I believe this is Radiant 6, to monitor uh, global trends and happenings around the world. Uh, it's just really fascinating to me that they've repurposed this tool for marketing for uh, the needs of helping people. Um, and we work in environments like this all the time where we customize our technologies. To, uh, uh, we, we place our technologies in their environment because it's more customized to their workflow. Um, what does that look like? Uh, this is a good example. This was uh, a project we did around Hurricane Irene in 2011, where we used uh, what's called sentiment analysis to monitor these uh, conversations going on during uh, the storm, uh, and then measure, uh, try to quantify the emotional response people were having. So were people upset? Were people, uh, I wouldn't say happy, but were they uh, content uh, with the way things were being responded to? What's interesting is if you're a disaster response agency and you see a bunch of red dots, which in this case meant negative, um, in areas that you had already delivered your service, you knew you weren't very effective and you knew you could go back and uh, do a better job before that became uh, more of a problem. Um, or you could see areas that you'd miss. Um, and so now we're starting to get into areas of measurement, so quantification and segmenting that audience that you've discovered with monitoring um, into um, different regions of, that you might be interested in. Um, in the case of the human face of big data, uh, we worked with them to develop a survey where they, um, uh, they sent this survey out to a few hundred thousand people around the globe, uh, generated uh, several million responses uh, because the survey was pretty long, uh, and just asked them everyday questions um, like, do you know your neighbor? Um, and then we took that information back uh, and then we were able to help them visualize that in different ways. So we, uh, as part of their marketing campaign, they wanted to relate to people how their responses to survey questions could be visualized in ways that made sense to them. In this case, it was, uh, it, we looked at the, the population that answered in Canada and we looked at the population that answered in the United Kingdom and we were able to, um, just based on this survey, it's not not uh, uh, a complete study uh, surface that, uh, in this case, the uh, British uh, responders were more friendly than the Canadians. They knew their neighbors. Um, and these types of correlations and patterns within that data set were interactive. You could come to the site yourself and you could play with it. You could find things that were interesting to you and share these different uh, screenshots with people. Um, another way of looking at that data was geographically. So um, at the top, you had the questions um, and uh, those questions were actually like, uh, if you pulled them down and dragged them onto the globe, the globe would populate with the answers. And so you could start to see um, how the geography of the people responding to the questions uh, intersected. And so you could dra drag lots of different questions down and you could see different ways of um, these patterns or trends overlapping. Uh, what uh, might be interesting about this is if you connect it to something uh, like a web uh, survey monkey um, or some of the online survey tools, you can uh, explore different ways of looking at that data. Uh, and we've since open sourced this particular project. 
Uh, another way uh, human face looked at uh, questions was uh, f uh, surfacing uh, these in more of an infographic type form. Um, so you can see here uh, the people who responded to this survey who uh, if they left their house, if it was on fire and they took their gun, they were more likely to sleepwalk and vote for Mitt Romney. That's the people who answered the questions, uh, not our assertion. Uh, another tool that uh, uh, I think is really interesting, it's, it's rather new, it's called Mapper, M-A-P-P-R dot I-O, uh, by a company called uh, uh, Vibrant Data. And what they have attempted to do is create an interactive way of, of relating data, uh, complex data sets in a way that connects to narratives. So building stories around data. Um, and so you see these dots and these lines that connect the dots. Um, these are all actually interactive. So you, if you say clicked on Egypt at the top, uh, everything else would kind of fade away and you would see how Egypt is connected to all these different things. Um, so bringing this back to the brand conversation, uh, uh, the Vibrant Data team actually used this for TED as well. And what they did is they uh, looked at the, there's a group of TED fellows um, uh, alumni of the TED Fellow program who work on different projects together. And what they tried to do was map the relationships between all the TED Fellow alumni uh, and uh, display it visually and build a narrative around that. So you can see all the TED Fellows are listed on this map. Uh, it's not easy to see, but they're all there. And they're all connected by these nodes and these uh, lines that in between the nodes that show strong degrees of, of collaboration or uh, partnering together on projects, what have you. Um, if you click on one of them, in this case I clicked on uh, David German, who actually works at Vibrant Data, um, it shows you all the people that he's worked with. And if you were building a report uh, or building uh, some sort of narrative that you have to relate to the public, over here, that white space in the top corner is uh, where you would build your, you would add your narrative. You would explain why these connections exist, why, what is driving them and what, what it is underlying. Um, and the nodes are segmented by color so you can see um, how the different types of things are, are separated or, or related. Um, so in this case, all the red dots were people who worked in art and design. All the uh, green dots are people who work in science and the environment. Um, this is a general purpose tool, so you can input your own segments, your own uh, categories, your own data sets, um, and, and display it in this way. Um, the other thing that they do really well, I think, is uh, take the same sort of relational uh, matchmaking uh, and display it uh, geographically. Um, so no, not only are you seeing how people and potentially places are connected, but you're seeing um, where they are in relationship to each other, which I think is really powerful. Um, there's other tools like visually that make uh, working, that make telling stories with data easier uh, for the layman, um, the, the, this type of interactive storytelling is becoming more and more popular with uh, the uh, uh, news sites. Um, with news sites and, and um, some of the blogs and, and so on. And finally, we'll get into mitigation. So we, if you're able to segment your audience, what are you able to then do with it? Uh, in the one case, we used uh, Hurricane Irene and the response to that as, as one example. Uh, another example is a project we worked on uh, with a group called Wounded Warriors to monitor the conversations of, of veterans um, who might be in distress, um, who are using social media spaces to communicate. Um, Wounded Warriors, therefore, is now using it to respond to their, their needs. Um, so that's essentially uh, my talk. I'm happy to explain a bit more, and thanks for coming.